Hey, thanks for checking out the computer-based engineering lesson for this week. Um, thank, uh, thanks to everybody that turned in um, something from last week. There are a lot of cool chairs and other things that people um, submitted, um, and I wish we could build them right now, but we have to save these ideas for later unless you've got the means to do it at home. This week we're going to do something a little bit different I'm real excited about. Um, so um, oftentimes you'll have an object that you want to uh, work on, adjust, modify, copy, change in some way, uh, but you don't have a digital model of it first. Um, there's a great technique in boat building called um, a table of offsets that allows us to do this. So what we're going to do this week is look at the process for taking an object, whether it's simple or a little more complex, how to take any interesting parts of a form and get those into a three-dimensional model so that we could either manufacture it or just come up with new ideas related to it. Um, so I'm going to start by looking at some examples of these objects and we're going to start with a really simple one. Okay, so this book um, we already know the easiest way to decide how to draw this in CAD would be to measure the rectangle. We would just measure a height, we would measure a length, and we'd measure a width, and you'd be done. But we want to use a method that is uh, going to work, um, going to work on a, a different object, which is called a table of offsets. I'm going to pick a zero point. Um, let's call this corner the zero. Um, we're going to measure every inch all the way down and every inch this way, and a height at every point, and we'll end up with a grid. So if I pick this point here as my zero plane, I could measure down and get a certain height at every point. But let's call this is our zero plane. This is our zero point to measure from. It's one and three eighths tall. Okay, now I'm gonna go one inch down and I'm going to measure again. Still one and three eighths tall. We're noticing a pattern. We don't need to do this for the book. Let's do something a little bit more complicated. This is sort of a cutting board style thing that I um, glued up and then carved with an angle grinder with a flap wheel attachment on it. Um, so no digital stuff was used in making this, but um, I would be cool to have a model so I could see and see a bunch of them if I wanted to later. So um, I might first capture the perimeter and the curves and uh, get that into CAD as just a, as just a, flat, um, a flat curved shape, um, kind of an oval-ish, rectangle-ish shape. Um, or I could just start by getting my heights correct. Let's say I really care about this dish here, and I want to copy that. Let's call this the zero point. I'm going to set my ruler there. And it's nine inches long to here. I want to know that curve at the midline. So I'm going to put this right in the middle. I'm going to grab my other ruler. I'm going to get a value here, value here. That's about an eighth of an inch about a quarter of an inch, about three-eighths of an inch, about a half an inch, half an inch, three-eighths, quarter, um, one-eighth, and zero. Now I'd also need to get that over here. Zero, one-eighth, quarter, 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 one-eighth, zero. I could take these things and put them all into Excel in a document um, or uh, write them down um, and then you would have a grid of all of the heights. To get this true form, we would need a table for the top and we need a table for the bottom and then we could put those two planes together and get a shape. I wouldn't need to do this whole object because it's symmetrical, symmetric, so I could just take the midline and then do this side and then Fusion or other programs know how to copy it to the other side. I could use the exact same process for this thing. This was carved on a CNC machine in two halves and then put together. That would work too. Let's look at something with a little bit different symmetry to it. Now, excluding the handle, 
excluding the teapot, the, the spout and uh, the little knob handle, we could look at just this shape here. Now, it would make sense to call this our zero because it's a circular, it's a uh, rotated or revolved shape. And I could set this at zero. It's a dirty one. Let's get a better one. And I could measure the distance down at zero, zero, one, two, three, four, or I could go every quarter inch if I wanted to get all of these little bumps and layers all the way down. So it's up to you and what you need. The example I'm actually going to do this week is a little bit different. It's something I've thought about uh, a lot and I would love to finally get to. My friend has a car that he would uh, that was given to him and it's a great functioning sedan and he wants to make it something a little bit more awesome. So uh, we're going to cut the back half off of it and make it into a camper wagon. Uh, but first we need a good cab model of it. So check out the next video, which is us doing a table of offsets for a Buick sedan. And um, look for next week, how to modify shapes and add things to this. So I'll have a video of the CAD work that I do and a video of the, um, of the actual taking the measurements on the car. Your assignment this week is to model something um, using sequential measurements or a table of offsets that you can then copy uh, or modify in the future. So thanks for checking it out. Check out the next video.